Uh, look, a week ago, nobody was talking about the prospect of uh, Chiesa moving to Liverpool. What they're also looking at is Chiesa from Juventus, still only 26. And so it makes sense for him to find a move. Liverpool was, is an unlikely destination. Liverpool have just signed Federico Chiesa for around 15 million euros, leading to a lot of good and bad talk about him. So let's get into why they did it, how they did it, and what it will mean going into the future of Liverpool and Chiesa. For almost his entire career, Federico Chiesa has been one of the most talented players in the world. His youth career began in... Settignanese. All the way back in 2002. Five years later, he'd make his move to Fiorentina at 10 years old. For the next nine years, he worked his way up through the academy ranks and eventually broke into the first team in the 2016-17 season at 19 years old, starting in the season opener against Juventus. Though he was pulled off at halftime, his performance was convincing enough that he made into Paulo Sousa's plans as a consistent starter in this Fiorentina side. The surplus in minutes saw his performances improve tremendously, and Chiesa scored his first goal in his 10th appearance for the club against Curabag in the Europa League, one of the greatest talents in Italian football. As a Fiorentina fan, my favorite player. By the end of his debut season, there was no doubt he was one of the brightest talents in Serie A, and it wasn't long before Sousa started to incorporate him as the center of the team. Federico's form was superb and he was giving 200% every game. His style of play much resembled his father Enrico, who actually scored 138 goals in his Serie A career. Chiesa was destined for success because he played with energy and determination, he was creative and had a nose for goal, and he was comfortable either being a winger or a striker. Chiesa's first instinct upon receiving possession is to dribble at the nearest opponent, and that is exactly what Fiorentina needed. So he extended his contract at the end of the 2016-17 campaign, hoping to remain at the club for the next four years. It was around 2017-2019 that he continued to make his rise in the league, with every season that passed his output improved. He got used to regular first team football, he was injury free, and his market value had gone up 2 million at the time of his debut, to 60 million in the 2019-20 season. His most memorable moments came when he scored a hat-trick in the Coppa Italia quarterfinal against AS Roma to send Fiorentina into a rare semi-final appearance. He scored another hat-trick that season, this time in Serie A against Bologna. The first Fiorentina player to do it in over six years. 2020 was around the same time that Chiesa found consistent appearances in the Italian national team, scoring his first goal against Armenia in the Euro 2020 qualifiers. Federico Chiesa had become the sweetheart of Fiorentina in Italy and his value was only starting to be realized by other clubs around the world. Fast forward to October 2020, Juventus would make the signing of Federico Chiesa on loan for a fee of 3 million euros for the first season and 7 million euros for the second season, with the option to buy priced at around 40 million euros. His arrival brought lots of excitement to the forward options Juventus had, but there were still lots of doubts surrounding him. Some users sang things along the lines of, Signing Chiesa is the best thing Juve did ever in their history. But others were saying they prefer Bernadeschi, another new signing Juve made who was having a tough time getting into decent form. This comment, let's hope he doesn't end up like Bernadeschi, perfectly foreshadows his future. But for now, Chiesa made his debut in the black and white on October 17th, 2020 against Crotone, where he assisted a goal for Alvaro Morata. Subsequently though, receiving a red card. This wasn't the best start for him, but he would get another chance to prove himself in the Champions League three days later against Dynamo Kiev. In this match, he would play quite mediocre, but he did good work creating chances and getting into the final third but there were still lots to work on for Federico Chiesa. As the season moved on, he started to bang in goals. By the end of the 2020-21 campaign, he had scored 14 goals, his most ever. And real quick, before I continue on the video, I please ask that you hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get the channel to 3K and it would really help me out. Thank you. During the Champions League campaign, he was incredible, scoring three goals over two legs against Porto and scoring against Dynamo Kiev. In the Coppa Italia, he scored the winning match against Atalanta. And finally, his 70 million euro market value started to make sense. As the summer rolled around, Euro 2020 was approaching and Chiesa was almost thrown to the side. He wouldn't start a match until Italy took on Wales in the final day of the group stage and it was when he was given a chance to play, he earned himself the man of the match in the 1-0 victory over Wales. When the round of 16 against Austria rolled around, Chiesa still wasn't given the opportunity to stay in the starting 11, and some fans thought he deserved it, but he did make a substitute appearance where he came on and scored the opening goal, to later help Italy win an extra time. His performances so far at the Euros had been miles more than what he is expected of, and fast forward to the semi-finals against Spain, Chiesa was given the starting spot on the wing, and it would be an understatement to say that he impressed. In the 60th minute, he scored the opening goal, giving Italy the lead and the first step into making it into the final. Even though Spain would equalize, Italy won on pens, and Chiesa was the man of the match by UEFA for the second time. So logically, Juventus triggered their buy clauses and officially signed Chiesa for 40 million euros. Given this signing was kind of a shock and his performances were so good that it prompted many news articles to praise him. However, there was one thing that wasn't widely spoken about him. But he's had injuries since then, and when I've watched him a few times for Juve, when I've watched him for, for Italy in tournament football, I don't see that same player that I saw in 2021, I think. Form and injury are the issue with Chiesa. 
Throughout his career, Chiesa's fitness has taken a serious toll on his footballing ability. Since the 2018-19 season, he's had 5 major injuries, missing a total of 16 matches up until the 2021-22 campaign. So near the end of his match against Spain, Chiesa had actually gotten injured just 4 minutes before full time, which meant he didn't get to play in the final against England. At the start of the new season, Chiesa had returned from the Euros, but the form had left him. He struggled to find the minutes he had last season in Serie A, but in the Champions League he was able to score a few goals, including Chelsea and Zenit. His season overall was going pretty well, you could say, until December. In a match against Atalanta, Chiesa suffered another injury which sidelined him for three and a half weeks. Upon his return against Napoli, he scored a goal, and in the next match against Roma, he assisted a goal in the first half hour. Things were looking great for him. However, his season would be ended early after he sustained an ACL tear shortly after. How sad. Such a long layoff for one of Italy's greatest talents, just like Del Piero. After nearly 10 months out of action, his return will come in the 2022-23 season against PSG coming on as a substitute, in what was Juventus' last UCL game of the season. When he came back, he wasn't really the same, and it took him a long time to get back into form. He only just scored his first goal in Serie A since his injury on the third to last game of the season. His 2022-23 campaign was underwhelming, but he couldn't be blamed because he was still getting back into football. Three months later, and the 2023-24 season was right around the corner but things were a little bit different for Chiesa. During his time away, his spot had been occupied by the likes of Filip Kostic, who was in great form. So when he came back, he actually had to fight for his spot, and the pressure pushed him to be better. In his first game of the season in Serie A, he scored against Udinese. In the next three games, he scored three goals consecutively. He seemed to finally have returned to the Italian store boy he was once labeled. He had scored a total of 10 goals and three assists by the end of the season, getting back to those numbers pre-ACL injury. The 2024 Euros were right around the corner, and he was ready to run it back just like Euro 2020 but only if things actually went that way. Chiesa did start in Italy's opening match against Albania. He played all right, he did his job. He started their next match against Spain and played pretty well, but was subbed off in the 64th minute because of how tight this match was. So fair enough. The last match of the group stage was against Croatia, and Italy needed the three points to make it to the knockout stages, which meant Chiesa started on the bench. He did go on to replace DeMarco 15 minutes after halftime, but he wasn't able to get his name on the score sheet, which did not help him out. Somehow Italy made it to the round of 16, and surprisingly we saw Chiesa start. Italy failed to score any goals and failed to make it past Switzerland, an overall underwhelming Euro 2024 campaign from Chiesa, and things would only get worse for him, because his time at Juve would come to an ugly end, and quite quickly. With the arrival of new manager Thiago Mata, he did not need to use Chiesa, and he was phased out completely from the manager's plans. Chiesa did not make any appearances for Juve in preseason, so it was clear that they were desperate, desperate to sell him. We understand, we were hearing from uh, Damesh earlier, that Liverpool have agreed a fee of 12.5 million for Federico Chiesa from Juventus. Has Liverpool have agreed a deal with Juventus for Federico Chiesa. The deal is worth 12.5 million pounds. Liverpool haven't done much business at all this summer, making Chiesa one of their only signings. But Arne Slot is not short of options up front. So even for the bargain they paid for him, why would they sign him in the first place? And what can we expect from him in Anfield? The other side of the story is that Liverpool's wingers were sort of injury prone last season, mainly Diego Jota as well as Salah, Gakpo and Nunes missing a handful of games themselves. So potentially the strategy behind this signing could be to have him fit in when the other players are injured. Because where would he even fit in? On the left is where Liverpool have the most options. Luis Diaz has yet to give up control of that area since the arrival of Arne Slot, so I don't think he will fit in there. However, he could be decent off of striker. Juventus tended to play without wingers when Chiesa was at the club, so if they played a 4-4-1-1, with Arne Slot conjuring some tactical brilliance, he would be fitting to play off of Gakpo or Nunez, who could play a similar role to Vlahovic like at Juventus. I also wouldn't put it past Chiesa to play as a lone striker in a 4-3-3 system, but with all the other and better options they have up front, I don't think that's the best option for the Reds to play. On the right hand side is where it makes the most sense to me, but they have Mosella who is miles better than him right now, and I don't even see Chiesa putting up a fight for the right wing spot in the first place, so obviously that's not going to work. His place is still up in the air and we really don't have an answer to where he'll be playing, but I'm pretty sure Arneslaw has a plan for him.